on the, the first half, we are dealing with pattern recognition on the anterior complex, and then we'll have a live demo when, where we try to explore anatomic landmarks on fetal brain evaluation. We'll start with uh, some basic from the anatomy. The cabocytoplucidum is a fluid-filled cavity. We really don't know uh, the origin of this fluid because it's not connected with the ventricular system nor with the subarachnoidal system. It is rectangular or triangular. One out of four will be triangular. It's closely related with the leaflets of the septum, with the anterior horns of the lateral ventricles, with the corpus callosum, the genou, the knee, and also with the interhemispheric fissure. It's easy to identify it in axial evaluation, but also in coronal evaluation. Here in blue, we are able to visualize the septi that are two thin vertical membranes that run from the corpus callosum until the fornix, and between them we have the cabum that is in close, close relation with the corpus callosum. The fornix here is placed more or less on the same level of the telecroidea, and something with the third ventricle. It's very interesting to note this. This is the intertalemic adhesion that is one important landmark on the morphology of the third ventricle. We are also able to identify here the optic chiasma and the sylvian fissure. It's an impor important landmark on screening, and it's very important that we make all the image Including, including the CSP. The screening axial image must include the CSP. The CSP is visible between 18 and 37 weeks. Later in gestation, it can fuse. It's almost always fused after three months of birth. There is a wide variation on the width, but we can take about six millimeters as the upper limit on the range of the morphologic scan, 20 to 23 weeks. There is a common pitfall that is mistaken the columns of fornix for the CSP, but the columns of fornix are two hypoechoic lines without fluid inside and that don't interrupt the interhemispheric <coughs> fissure. In, real, in reality, they are a little bit below the level of the, ca of the cabocetoplucidum. Here, the columns and the cavum. I, tr I try to de divide this situation alteration of the anterior complex in two big groups. The first one, we are not able to visualize the CSP. And in the second one, the CSP is present, but the morphology is abnormal. For the first one, we start with the absence, CSP, and wide separation of the anterior horns. In this case, we are not able to identify the CSP, and we have a wide interhemispheric fissure. That, in the association of a colpocephalic lateral ventricles, and the wide separation of the anterior ventricles gives the teardrop aspect of the ventricle. That is very suggestive of uh, complete the genesis of the corpus callosum. However, the diagnosis relies on the identification of its absence on sagittal and coronal planes. On sagittal planes, we are not able to identify the, sep the cavum nor the corpus callosum. And in coronal planes, we, we can see that the intermissary fissure runs down to the third ventricle without any kind of the interruption. We can use Doppler interrogation, but it's not really, really important for this di di diagnosis. In the complete genesis, the anterior cerebral artery fails to form the loop to the pericolosal artery. It's more interesting to see that here are the, the veins, the interior cerebral veins, and the vein of Galeno, because we are using in this uh, uh, SMI that is a low velocity Doppler. Also, on the late uh, term of the gestation, we have this typical 
pattern of its location that goes from the roof of the third ventricle radiating uh, to the exterior. It's very typical of uh, complete the genesis of the corpus callosum and that don't change the diagnosis, the prognosis of the situation. But a genesis of the corpus callosum, complete or incomplete, are associated with malformation of cortex development. And these three babies, we can see that they are, have premature salsi, both in the internal aspect of the cortex, in the superior aspect of the cortex, and the posterior aspect of the cortex. And that is associated with a poor prognosis. But bear in mind that the key for the screening is the pattern recognition on the axial plane. There is another common pitfall Sometimes the, the roof of the third ventricle in complete genesis of the corpus callosum are slightly upper displaced, and that can mimic the CSP and give us a wrong diagnosis. Another group, we don't have CSP and have anterior fuse horns. Like in this case, in coronal evaluation, we are not able to see the leaflets of the CSP. If we have otherwise a complete normal evaluation, this could be a genesis of the septum plucidum. And that situation is most frequently with a good prognosis. But we must discuss also differential diagnosis like septotic dysplasia, it's not too frequently. Septotic dysplasia plus malformations of cortical development, lobar holoprosencephaly, or disruption of the septum plucidum. We can identify the optic chiasma on a ultrasound, on prenatal ultrasound, for me, the easiest way was described by Vinales is on the coronal approach. We take the anterior cerebral artery as landmark and the optic chiasma is between these uh, yellow arrows. But bear in mind that a presence of a normal optic chiasma in prenatal evaluation in ultrasound or in MRI, don't exclude completely septotic dysplasia. So it's still a difficult counseling these couples. Another situation for differential diagnosis of fuse and your horns is uh, lower or low prosencephaly. But in this situation, we have not a normal corpus callosum and incomplete interhemispheric fissure. On the right, we have a typical sign that is the, the cerebral artery runs under the skull, and that is because the interhemispheric fissure is incomplete on the anterior portion. Now you come to the last of this group, that we are not able to identify the carbon septic lucid because it is obliterated. Here we are able to identify the two leaflets, the two septi, but no flu inside it and also in uh, sagittal evaluation. Sometimes the carbon verga is patent. Absence of fluid in the carbon sept lucid, if isolated, if everything is normal, is probably a benign situation, as described by Malinger in 2012. Now we change topics. The CSP is present, but is abnormal in shape. The first situation, the CSP is squarish, shorter and wider. We can have a subjective evaluation of that, is shorter, wider, sometimes rounded, or we can use the ratio described by Shawi, that is length over width ratio. It's probably the same. It's very frequently associated with partial agenesis of the corpus callosum. Most of the situation have a ratio under 1.5. But if you look to the, to the data, most of them have a, a ratio around 1 that should be really squarish. 
And another situation is a dilated CSP described at the width over 95 percentile. That is associated with a neoploid fetus. But bear in mind that we don't know how this marker will interact with the other soft markers that we already know, and we don't know what is important after the first trimester screening. It's also associated with deletion 22Q. And this is a hint, probably, if you have any cardiopathy, conotroncal cardiopathy, or hypoplastic thymus, and this situation. I don't know really if it's isolated, so if we should valorize it. The last situation is a distorsis anterior complex. It also can range a lot. In this situation, we have a really distortion, and the midline is really distorted. There is some heterogeneity here, and we have a round anterior horn of the ventricle. That is very su suggestive of malformation of the cortical development, and in this case, was hemimengencephaly and polymicrogyria. But, on the other hand, we can have more subtle dis uh, uh, distortion of the anterior complex, and if everything is normal, that situation is also normal. So, in summary, we can divide this pathology into groups. The first one, the, we are not able to identify the septum plucidum. If the, the anterior horns are quite apart, it's very suggestive of complete, complete agenesis of the corpus callosum. If we have fused horns, we can have uh, a genesis of the septal pulsate, but we also must discuss septotic dysplasia, septotic dysplasia with malformation of cortical development, lower holoprosencephaly. If we have obliterated uh, carbon septal pulsate, if everything is normal, it will be probably a normal variant. And if we are able to identify the septum, the cavum septum, but is abnormal in shape, a squarish or a rounded CSP is uh, the, the risk uh, to have partial genesis of corpus callosum is very high. If we have dilated CSP, we may think about trisomy or deletion of 22Q. If we have distorted CSP, we must really perform a complete examination to rule out malformations of cortical development. Thank you, Isot. I think now we are going to... Well, we will start. Uh, I, I would like to... i like to... to imagine that every time we are performing a brain evaluation, we have to be as strict as a nuchal scan. So sometimes we have image like this, which are too small with the focus that is not in place. So the first advice is try to get good image, good magnification, and the fo focus well in place try to get an overview of the baby. He's on bridge position. A quick overview of the brain. So let's start. We start with uh, strict axial planes in order to, to be able to get accurate measurement. And uh, we'll be using the anterior landmark, the CSP, anterior horns or lateral ventricles, corpus callosum, thalamus, third ventricle, ambient sister. We should also take a look on the Sylvian fissure.
This lady has uh, 23 weeks. This angle, as described by Edwin Querello, at 24 weeks should be 90 degrees, is almost there. The landmark for this evaluation is the fornix anteriorly and the ambient cistern posteriorly. For the measurement of the lateral ventricles, we use as a marker the periotoxipital fissure. You take the inner aspect of it and take the measurement without including the walls. To evaluate, to, for evaluation of the posterior fossa, we also use as anterior landmark the cavum and rotate slightly posteriorly. And here we are able to identify the vermis and the fourth ventricle. That should be shorter and wider, as Laurent Guivaud described it. Now we are going to the sagittal evaluation. I'm really on the top of the uterus. It's not an ideal position. Mm -hmm. Here we are able to see the rostrum of the corpus callosum, the telechoroidea. From this point, if you turn 90 degrees the probe, we'll obtain the coronal evaluation, and we go up and down. We turn 90 degree, we return to sagittal evaluation. We go to profile, 90 degrees, we will obtain both eyes. I'm turning around. Both eyes profile mid sagittal coronal evaluation. Can we go from the posterior? If you go posteriorly, we are, it's easy to identify the Silvius aqueduct here. Let's try again. The vermis and the Silvio aqueduct. Here, the vermis, the fourth ventricle, the primary fissure that should divide the vermis in one third superior, two thirds inferior, the aqueduct of Silvius. I don't know if you want me to show something or... Anything special you are interested in? So, would you 
like me to show? Yes, please. How do you measure the CSP? How do you measure the CSP? Well, it depends on the papers. <laughs> sometimes is on the middle, sometimes is the wider portion of CSP. It's another question. So the 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 graphic from from Shawi is on the middle. The other one is the highest measurement. Can you show optic nerves and chiasm? We'll try. Okay, thanks. Oh, is there? It's easier to see on the third trimester, but this is between here and here. and here in a sagittal evaluation and the optic nerve. Um, how do you measure the um, anterior ventricle, I mean the posterior horn? The po an anterior horn? No, the anterior, um, when you measure axially, you always measure the, uh, how do you measure the ventricle which is near to the transducer? Uh, we don't have really any magic to measure the proximal one, because if we try to measure like this, we will take a, an image that is not perpendicular, so is, we should not measure. If we tilt this, the probe to the shoulder of the baby like this, we'll be able to identify the study the walls of the ventricle, but not to measure it. The best way is to try to, to look if they are symmetrical, like this. These are the both, both posterior horns, and we can see that they are symmetric. So we can take the measure of the distal one and assume that they should be symmetric. Obrigado, Miguel. May you come forward together with uh, Laurent? Yes, I, I will. Oh. Oh. Very good job. Um, because you are very systematic, the axial plane is in the middle. It's uh, incredible. Could you just uh, remind us how to look at the sylvan fissure? Because some um, people look at the sylvan fissure in the axial plane, yes. but uh, you have to keep in mind that. Uh, we should uh, look oh, at the sylvan fissure no. at the level of uh, the uh, fornix, like that. Because uh, I was told why you use the fornix. In fact, the fornix is a very small structure like that. And the CSP is large. So with the CSP, you can, you can measure the, uh, with an oblique plane. you still axial, but you change your plane. And doing that, you change the shape of the Sylvian fissure. So the CSP is a very, it's very tiny uh, because it's the end of the fornix, uh, the fornix colon. So if you have this point, you are sure that you cannot modify the shape of the Sylvian fissure. Because uh, if you look in the Congress, some people say, yes, I look at the Sylvian fissure in the axial plane. Uh, but they look, in fact, uh, somewhere where there was a carbon septum pellicity. So I know that it's one more uh, plane to know, uh, but it's not very uh, difficult. You can just go below as, uh, as you did. So uh, this is important thing. And now there is plenty of way at looking at the Sylvian fissure. Uh, there is paper about doing this with uh, a transvaginal probe using coronal. I think this way of looking at that, it's a routine. You have to do this. So, uh, and if you look at the guidelines uh, of the ISRUG, there is a drug, uh, diagram showing, in fact, the uh, things that you should look at. You have the Cydian fissure, which is in the middle. So because it's in the middle, 
why uh, you, you should have a look at it, even if it's not on the guidelines, because it's very, very simple. And uh, I do th this all the time. I begin my scan looking at the Sylvan Fisher, as I did this morning for the live scan. I begin by that, looking at the CSP, look at the ventricle. Um, so as you did. So thank you so much for your excellent uh, live scan.